In this video we will learn how to load the bitmap pattern into 3D Studio Max. Uh, we draw it with uh, spline lines and at the end of the day convert it to a clean edit, uh, editable poly surface. Here in my Windows Explorer you can see uh, the bitmap pattern and you can see that it has uh, uh, that the width and the height uh, have the same length and uh, uh, if, it's, uh, if it has a contrast like this, you can also see it really well in 3D Studio Max. Okay, the first thing is I quickly check my units under Unit Setup. I'm in Centimeters in Display Unit and also Centimeters. That's really important in uh, my unit uh, setup. And the first thing I do, I just draw a plane. Uh, a plane as a, as a squ uh, square plane and uh, just enter in my keyboard entry a length of uh, 30 centimeters and the width of centimeters I go into create and uh, here we go this is my plane and on this plane I just want to map my uh, my pattern okay I go into my material editor and uh, with the first material I just go into get material and I just load uh, one of the Mendelway Autodesk generic materials with double click and under image uh, I just open uh, this field uh, none and uh, again into my in my material map browser with bitmap I just double click and I choose my uh, first uh, pattern uh, which uh, where I want to work on actually Okay, under size, I just have to enter the same size uh, like my uh, like my plane. It uh, was 30 centimeters. And the next thing I have to do is just have to do uh, say assign material to a selection, and I have to say show shaded uh, material in viewport. And here we go, and uh, we can see our pattern, and you can only see it if obviously you use a shaded or realistic and you can't see it in your wireframe. In the next steps we want to redraw this pattern in 3D Studio Max with spline lines and uh, you have different kind of options. If you go just into shape of course we can use line we will actually also do this uh, but you also have uh, some already basic uh, uh, basic splines, for example like this angle which is uh, really handy and uh, uh, you can just see that you can define the size, for example you can go for, uh, for a hexagon uh, uh, with six sides, you can go for, uh, for a triangle, so you have many options uh, also with, uh, with uh, this hexagon or you can go into stars and you can already see that you can adjust the stars with different kind of uh, uh, points and all these could be basic uh, starting points uh, for working uh, with uh, redesigning or designing and drawing a pattern. It's really good and important to understand the logic behind your pattern and with many patterns it's like this that there's a basic grid behind this and once you draw this basic grid it's much easier at the end of the day to redraw the pattern. With this pattern, uh, for example, it's like this. It's based on uh, uh, triangles and uh, we just draw our first uh, triangle. Uh, this one, somewhat like this. And um, I just move it to the first position and I just copy it. Just hold my uh, my shift key and uh, copy it to uh, the side. I just turn it with angle snap on. I also have my snap toggles on and 2.5 and right mouse click I, I have activated vertex and uh, midpoint. Uh, actually we only need vertex but midpoint is also sometimes quite handy. And uh, my angle snap is on and I just choose my select and rotate and I just rotate it to 180 degrees and the next thing is I zoom in a little bit and with my snap function on I just choose this edge and I just move it to the other edge of my first triangle. Okay now the only thing I have to do is I just have to select these two uh, 
uh, spline lines again and I just hold my shift key I just take this top corner if you're not able to move it properly just click into the into this part so you can really see uh, the rectangle so I just hold it and I just move it to uh, the bottom and I just choose a number for example like 10 and uh, so I already have a really long line of uh, my uh, rectangles and I choose this again I select all my triangles I hold my shift key and uh, I just move it down to this position and uh, again just say I want to have uh, 10, uh, 10 copies and here we go this is my basic pattern I just want to use these splines as my underlay pattern and uh, just not to have too many spline lines if you can just see there are already quite many I just want to attach them to one and just choose my first n-gon and I can only attach them to one spline line if I convert it uh, or uh, just add an editable uh, and edit spline on top and if I choose an edit spline I can just attach all the other triangles and I can just attach every single triangle which is a lot of work actually I can also just go into attach multi uh, then I just uh, look at all my spline lines and they all should be a part of this and I just say string A just go inside and just say string A and attach and here we go we just have it in one object okay we can also see that my pattern doesn't fit perfectly to my uh, bitmap uh, I also did it just quite roughly with my first triangle I just moved my pattern to the right side and now I can just start uh, redrawing my pattern based on the script I just go into uh, uh, shapes again I go into line and right mouse click my uh, vertex is activated and I draw my first hexagon here you go I close my spline and uh, you can already see that I can just now also just redraw other parts of my of my pattern this part for example and here the next one and this one and if I select all my splines with um, uh, with uh, window crossing and uh, just select all of them I can you can already see that this is the pattern I uh, do and I just go into isolate selection this little light and uh, what you can do is uh, you can already uh, copy this pattern if I just select it I still remember what it looks like uh, what the pattern actually looks like uh, I can compare it again to my original pattern so you can just see that this point has to go to this corner actually so I just choose this point I hold my shift key again and just move it to this point and I just want to have 10 copies okay here we go and now I select them actually and I can just hold my shift key again and uh, grab this point I always use my uh, my uh, snap function and uh, I just hold it and move it into this position here we go and I also say again 10 copies and uh, you can see that we produced our pattern uh, in a really nice way and exactly uh, the same principle like my bitmap pattern if you want to do a polygon surface out of this you can do the following the first thing I do is I just select them uh, all my spline lines and I just copy them to uh, to the left to uh, keep all my spline lines because probably I still need them for uh, uh, for other work and uh, I just select uh, my original splines and uh, go into isolate selection 
and uh, here I just convert all these single splines you can see it right now um, I select all of them again I just convert them to uh, editable poly okay it already looks uh, looks really good and so I now have single polygons and what I have to do is uh, I just attach now all the polygons to uh, to my first polygon which I just already named pattern okay I just go into attach and I just say attach list so I don't have to uh, click every single uh, polygon and I just uh, again go into my uh, menu and say string A so I select all of them I go into attach and here we go uh, this is a really nice polygon service and uh, uh, done out of my uh, spline line uh, uh, pattern this pattern already looks really good but if I go into editable poly hierarchy vertex and I just zoom in and just select uh, any of these vertex points then I can see that I have selected two vertex points and uh, uh, the reason is just because uh, uh, at the end of the day uh, there were also um, several spline lines uh, next to each other so what I can do is I can just select all my vertex points with string A and uh, I can weld them uh, so uh, I just go into my weld settings and uh, just open the menu and I just want to weld every vertex points w uh, in between a radius of 0.1 centimeters and if I go into uh, uh, okay you can already see the preview that it just reduces from 2000 vertex points to 1000 vertex points and uh, I just say okay and now I only have 1043 vertex points and I don't have double vertex points on one position anymore okay we finish this video uh, with some advice in terms of the pattern uh, I obviously uh, it took me some minutes uh, to figure out the smallest shape which I can actually then copy if there are some th things uh, as an overlay and uh, it shouldn't bother you too much because at the end of the day with the weld function you can get rid of these double vertices so uh, don't worry about this uh, too much it's also like this uh, if you don't have uh, also uh, uh, not always like that you find a really easy basic grid and then you probably have to redraw it and you can probably just start with a hexagon uh, if I go into this pattern and just go into angon and uh, here is my uh, uh, angon and I just increase the size so this is now my hexagon and I just move this hexagon to my uh, object I rotate it with angle snap on obviously and uh, make it slightly bigger then I just copy my hexagon for example to this position and with this one I already have uh, uh, this part of my uh, pattern and I just move it to uh, uh, this position and with this I can already redraw, redraw a part again I just go and follow my uh, my lines this point this point this point over there this point and I just go back and I close my uh, close my spline then now select my spline lines I go into isolate selection and uh, you can already see if I for example delete this one delete this one that this is already my first uh, my first second uh, shape of my pattern most of the patterns you will be able to draw with lines uh, this angon things and uh, where you're also able to draw triangles or for example with these uh, stars where you can have also a lot of options in terms of uh, in terms of shapes but uh, if you want to uh, draw precisely and uh, start drawing uh, with angles like this you have the first line and I just want to have the right angle then you have to adjust 3D Studio Max a little bit because on default this is not possible 
what you have to go is you have to do go and customize and then you have to go and do customize user interface I just open this right now and uh, here under my toolbar I go into uh, main UI all commands will stay I just go down to just go down to polar uh, snapping mode and important uh, with right mouse click on this surface if I go here uh, this snap functions have to be activated by the way I just go again and just say right mouse click and I just go into snaps and if I uh, if this is activated I just can take my polar snapping with drag and drop and just move it into my uh, snap functions here on the right and uh, with this function I can uh, then uh, draw really nice angles. Uh, by the way once you set up uh, this polar snapping mode uh, on your computer you can always use it so you only have to do it once. So let's have a look. I will close the menu and I just use my polar snapping and I go into a uh, line and draw the first point, point and you can already see that I have this uh, new uh, uh, feature where you can read the angle and uh, I just hold my shift key to draw uh, a rectangle line by the way um, and I click and you can see that I can just uh, uh, really uh, set the angle uh, in a way I want to have it and I just click here and there's also another function if you hold the old key then you can also see uh, the angle how it ends uh, here on my uh, first point so if you hold the uh, old key then you will have a better control if you go back to your first point and uh, or if I just go here you can just see what the next angle we uh, be like so I think this is definitely something uh, to uh, to be able to control your uh, your splines quite uh, well and at the end of the day of course you always go into close spline and uh, here we go Thanks for watching.